Hi class, welcome back. I'm Matt Fisher, your accounting professor. In today's video, we're gonna start the capital budgeting topics. Over the next several videos, we're gonna be going over different techniques to help us to do proper capital budgeting. Now, what is capital budgeting? Well, think of it like this. Businesses need to invest in equipment, um, expensive items, buildings, maybe a product line. They make these investments uh, for their business. Well, they don't just you know, sit down and say, let's go and buy this or buy that. They wanna go through a process to decide how they should do this and what makes sense. What we're gonna be doing in the next several videos is going over some of these financial uh, techniques that we use to help us to make these decisions. They include the payback period, accounting rate of return, net present value, and internal rate of return. In this video, we're going to address the payback period. This is a really simple uh, method to use. What we're trying to do is look at getting back our original investment. So typically, whatever we paid for this, this asset, this expensive asset, uh, when will we get the money back? Over what time frame? So let's take a look at a couple of examples. The first example I'm gonna do is, the, is an even cash flow situation. Now, before I move in and look at this, uh, we're looking at cash flows. We're not looking at accounting profits. In this method, it uses cash flows. So let's assume that uh, this investment that we might be able to do, let's say it's equipment, uh, is gonna cost us $100,000. And over the next six years is going to give us a return, a cash flow, I should say, of $20,000 a year. So we would have 100,000, and I'm gonna put IO, which means that's our initial investment or initial outlay a lot of textbooks like to use. And then our cash flows, I'm gonna put here, here's one, two, three, four, five, six, is $20,000 each year for, yeah, well, speed this up, put down my 20,000 there. So 20,000 each year, even year five, all right? Well, when you have an even cash flow, meaning it's the same dollar amount each year, what you can do then is take your initial investment, which is 100,000, and divide it by that even cash flow, which is 20,000 years. You don't add them up, you take the cash flow that you have each year. So each year is 20,000. So then what this tells us is in five years, we will, pay back our original investment. The payback period is five years. Now, let's change our example slightly. This is even cash flows. Let's take a look at uneven cash flows. So we'll say the initial investment is still 100,000, but our cash flows are gonna be 40,000, 40,000, in year three, it goes down to 20,000. Year four will be 10,000. Year five will be 10,000. And year six will be 5,000. So there are our cash flows. Hopefully you can see that, that that equation that we had up on the board before doesn't work anymore because our cash flows are changing. So in this case, the easiest way to do is just start adding up your dollar amounts. You want to add up to 100,000. So you can see in year one, you would have 40,000. By year two, you'd be up to 80,000. And by year three, you'd be up to 100,000. So your payback period then would be three years. A lot of textbooks, they just say, well, why don't you start, start subtracting? So they take the 100,000, Minus 40 gets them to 60, minus 40 gets them to 20, minus 20 gets them to zero. It's the same thing, all right? So those are the two ways that we can calculate the payback period when we have an even cash flow or uneven cash flows. Now, before we move on to the next method in the next video, let's just take a look at some of these characteristics of the payback period. First of all, it's really easy to calculate, all right? If we've got our numbers already, our cash flows and the cost, it's very easy to calculate the payback period. And we're using cash flows. We'd like to see cash flows because then we'll know exactly when we would get paid back, right? Uh, one of the disadvantages, or a couple disadvantages, the first one, uh, it ignores time value of money. 
we're saying that this dollar amount is equal to you know twenty thousand dollars in today's dollars and in reality with time value money concepts this is really worth less than twenty thousand today but payback period just ignores that we just use strictly the cash flows and we don't discount them we don't convert them into today's dollars you'll see in later videos that some other methods do that they do convert these dollar amounts into uh today's dollars all right and then also uh, a drawback of the payback period is that it ignores cash flows after the payback period. Now, what I'm saying here is in our example here, the payback period is three years. See, it, it's not taking into consideration anything about this cash flow here. All right. And in reality, we want to make sure that we are still generating cash flows after the payback period. Right? We wouldn't want to just pay it back and then no cash flows. So you would glance at this information, but our, our response, our answer does not address anything beyond the payback period. All right, class, I hope this video has helped you. I hope this has made sense. In the next video, we're going to tackle the accounting rate of return. And then after that, we'll tackle the other two uh, capital budgeting techniques. Hope to see you back soon.